<laughs> no. Right, so today, how else can I embarrass myself with my introduction? <laughs> uh, it's just like basically, um, for the, like I like to be, like to read up on what I'm going to teach a little bit because I've got a brain like I said, like I said, I'm getting to that age where I can't even remember what I did yesterday. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you a stupid story. Last week, um, we went camping at the weekend, and my uh, and then the sleeping bags needed to wash, so I washed them. I can remember doing that, and then I put them on the line, and then, so if I read, I have to put my glasses on my head. So I've been reading, and then the washing machine had finished, thought, all right, I'll take them out. So I packed them on the washing machine, on the line, and that happened, and I didn't realise, and then I went into the house, and then I'm like, where are my glasses? <laughs> I've spent 20 minutes looking for them, <laughs> and they're outside on the grass. <laughs> So yeah, so like so yeah, so I'm reading bits to so I can like remember what I'm gonna say. So like the examples last week about age and, and like you know, I'm not a big set of wrinkles at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am. um no, um so what I mean yeah, that's so where are we looking at this week in the the, the clashes is uh, it's called ignorance. So I was gonna start with that one, but I don't like it, it just sounds like horrible, but then so is ego. But um, it's basically, um, the first one is called Avidya and Ignorance, and it's uh, what we attach ourselves to, a bit like with ego. So last week was identifying with, like, you know, oh, I'm not looking as young as I used to, and so on. Um, with, um, with this one, it's like identifying with the wrong thing in a similar way. So I'm trying to look at examples that was not age-related. Um, so, but, you know, uh, one of them was like... Um, well, the, the, the example of the game was a yoga teacher who hurt themselves, so she identified herself with the body. Uh, but I thought, well, you know, what if you've always been able to, um, I don't know, like walk for miles and then you've hurt your knee and then you're like, oh, I can't walk anymore and you're really sad because you can't do these things. And like, what will I do with my life because I can no longer walk for miles and so on. Um, so another one was like, um, another example was a guy who was um, in, in this, uh, else I was reading about, um, it's like, you know, if you've been in a, in a relationship with someone and then you've broken up with them, um, you know, I've done done this in the past, I remember like being with somebody and then like when we broke up, I'm like, you know, I'm like, who am I, you know, I can't, what, what's happened, you know, what, how can we, you know, have hurt each other so badly and stuff and, you know, you question who you are and um I'd imagine like some people like if they've been married for years and then like you know the the, the partner dies and then they're like you know what what do I do now you know we would identify I identified ourselves with this relationship with this being and so on and then it's like trying to work out who you are at the back of it and um so yeah it's it's an odd one to say um yeah it's like it's identifying with with a certain thing as opposed to um this this other idea isn't that we are you know we're energetic beings and um we're not a certain thing. There's always going to be another way of being happy. Another, a new, a new life is going to emerge whenever there's been a change. There, I've said it, and it didn't refer to a wrinkle at all. Uh, so there's no link at all with the with the lesson and the, and the thing. But I just like to introduce these themes in a garbled manner at the beginning of every lesson. Um, so we're going to get on with some stuff now. What we did last week is we did uh, 10 breaths in the postures. Uh, we're going to do it today. And today's lesson is actually quite, it's um, it's sitting down quite good for your back, is what I thought might be quite nice. Um, surreptitiously, I'm thinking I'm going to try a on some this. It's going to be really good for my legs in that they shouldn't hurt. Yes, I'm not using them. Um, so yeah, make yourself nice and comfortable and we shall start. I just love how Jenny leans against a sofa like that, just patiently waiting for me to shut up. <laughs> right, okay, so um, make yourself nice and comfortable and we'll begin. <clears throat> so, yeah. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Everybody is lying down. And people on the Zoom are lying down. You're sitting there like, I did say just uh, make yourself comfortable, didn't I? I didn't say please lie down. I should be more specific. This lesson's going to turn into chaos if I carry on with instructions like that, isn't it? <clears throat> okay, so beginning to settle into the space that you occupy on the floor, get a good sense of sense of um, the weight of the body. Mm -hmm. 
So equations like this idea of um, the five states of being. So last week we looked at ego, this week we looked at ego, we're looking at ignorance. So sit within the mind body. So if we start with the physical body from the so I'm the koshas, the physical body. Think of how the body meets the floor, all those wonderful ways, head, shoulders, hips. Sensing the legs and how they extend outwards. Sensing the arms and how they extend outwards. Run the line from the crown of the head down to the base of the hips and notice how each side of the body leans into the floor, whether or not it feels the same, whether or not one part of the back is heavier than the other. Taking your awareness down one layer into our pranamaya kosha, so our physical, so our, our energetic body. So, you know, energetically, how are you feeling? Is there any tiredness? Do you feel vibrant? And within the Panamaya Kosha and our energetic self is where the mood sits. So just notice, you know, the humour of the body. I would like us reading about the glaciers and it's like, you know, ignorance, um, like I say, today's one. And, you know, that could even just be if you tend to wake up in the morning and you always feel a certain way, you know, life doesn't have to be that way. You know, we shouldn't accept. So that ignorant way of being is thinking that things are always going to be a particular way. So you might just notice that in today's mood in the body, it might be different to yesterday's. And then in our Manamaya Kosha mind body, how is that? Is it active? Is it quiet? Do you feel, find there's an ability to settle in this present moment? So we'll start the movement as we do down at toes, give them a wiggle, stretch them out, think of those toes starting down at the ankles. Really radiate outwards, really scrunch, really radiate, really scrunch. And then point your toes and then push the heels away, so hinging down at the feet. And then circle the feet. Taking your knees in towards your belly, first you just give yourself a little bit of a hug so we can work into the kneecaps and then when you're ready start to extend your feet upwards to the ceiling and again re-bend and then again extend upwards. And then placing both feet on the floor just in front of you with the knees bent, draw your right knee in, tip it out to the right, circle it forward. So you're just drawing a really big zero with your knee in the air to release into the hips. So just follow the movement of the kneecap and just notice how that spirals down into the hip itself. And then we'll place the right foot down and take the movement into the left leg. So again, really big deep circle of the left knee.
And then we'll take both knees in towards the belly and then widen out your knees, take your hands towards the ankles. And starting to find a happy little baby position. So you might be holding your feet, you never know. You might be happy holding onto those ankles. So your knees are wide. And you just try just pressing into the, towards the right with your right elbow and you'll rock to the right. And then press towards the left with your left elbow and you'll rock to the left. Just kind of see if you can rock that baby. Keep your head on the floor, keep your ribs on the floor. And you're just rocking that baby left to right. Opening out those inner knees. Inner thighs, releasing into sacrum. And then we'll place both feet down the floor just in front of you, so knees are bent. Dropping your arms out roughly shoulder height, maybe a bit lower. And then crossing your right leg over your left thigh. So you've got those knees crossed, thighs are touching. And then we're going to just begin to tip the knees to the left. So think of rolling towards your little toe side of your left foot, and that is going to bring the knees over to the left. And then one big thing is to maybe decide, should the legs still be crossed? Should you maybe uncross the legs if, that, if it feels like it's pulling, for example? And then just think about relaxing the inner thigh, that left leg. And just feel how the feet connect into the floor, the length of the spine, the right shoulder. Just spend some quality time with your breathing. So untangling the legs, placing both feet on the floor, take your left knee across the right, so again legs are completely crossed, and then focusing on your right foot, tip towards that right little toe and that will bring your left knee across, and again this is when you decide should the legs be crossed at all, so you can always unstack, relax the right inner thigh, and just again feel the ground beneath the right hip, right shoulder, left shoulder. Spend some quality time with your breathing. So untangle the legs and place the feet on the floor. I'm going to move into bridge pose. So first things first is to think about where you can sense your heels. Are they in line with your knees? <clears throat> Do you want to maybe walk your feet forwards a little bit towards the front of your mat? Or maybe walk your feet right in towards your bottom? Kind of think of a happy place for you to do this movement. And then the movement to get into bridge is going to be from your feet. I just want you to imagine that you've got a little rolling pin just underneath the balls of your foot. You're just starting to roll that rolling pin forwards and then pull the rolling pin towards you with your feet. So the feet don't move. So you're just kind of imagining that what you feel under your feet from that mat is the rolling pin pushing forwards and pulling in. And just firstly noticing that as you push forwards with the mats and the feet, that the back flattens. And as you pull the heels towards you, the back arches. So firstly, kind of starting with that movement, letting the spine just gently wake up. And then we're going to push down and forwards and start to peel the hips up off the floor. And again, keep the energy in the feet. So I want those feet to be pushing down and forwards. And we're staying here for 10 breaths. So just keep the energy in that push of the feet.
slowly coming down and we're coming back into happy baby so we're going to bring those knees back in towards the belly taking those hands to ankles hands to feet whichever feels okay and again that little gentle press with the right elbow the gentle press of the left elbow rocks and side to side again just to release into hips lower back sacrum happy baby just going to repeat what we've just done so placing the feet back down on the floor cross the right uh, leg over the left arms are spread and then again send the knees over to the left again relax through that left knee and again unstack if that feels preferable in the breath again floating along that right side of the body from the hip into the lower back to the shoulder it might be nice just to kind of reflect on how this feels now compared to the first time round. And maybe just to notice how this side feels compared to when you did the left side as well. Standing the feet back up again crossing the left ankle over the right thigh again and tipping towards that right side of the right foot to send the knees over to the right and again unstacking the knee, stacking the knees if that feels better relax that right thigh if that feels better just allow your breath to massage down into that left side the left hip the left belly So stand your feet back up, we're just going to repeat that little bridge again. So find that happy place for your feet. And then imagine you've got that little rolling pin under your feet, push your feet forwards, pull your heels in. And then there'll be that little nice kind of perfect time where you push down and forwards, peel the hips up and move into your bridge pose. And again, we're staying here for those 10 breaths. So kind of noticing if you've got a tendency to have your feet together, sometimes having feet together and riding out the feet might be different kind of results. It might be a little bit easier to do. So the feet in line with hips, person as opposed to feet together. That's good to <laughs> So as you come down this time, we're not going to repeat. What we will do this time is drop our feet together and let the knees fall wide into Supta Baddha Konasana. So, so, so reclining um, cobbler's pose. I just remembered what this pose is called. I was talking to someone last week and I said, I know the name for this in Sanskrit. And like I said, my mind's going mental. Baddha Konasana, there you go. So you've got your big toes touching, little toes touching, knees are uh, dropped out. And you can keep it as a static pose. You can just maybe think of this as being something really passive and letting gravity work. But if you want to work a little bit harder, I want you to think of pressing the soles of your feet together. And what that does, you're going to feel tension in your thighs. You're going to even feel your lower back kind of roll into the floor. And then just relaxing the knees, relaxing the legs, relaxing the feet will send you back to where you started from, where the lower back arches gently away from the floor. And again, when you want to do that, again, you just push into the feet and feel how the back flattens and then the, and the legs tighten. And then that soft releasing and just feel how the pelvis drops back to a soft and relaxed position. And again, press into feet, feel the back flatten. And if you want to work a little bit harder, rather than just relaxing the legs and coming out of it, Imagine trying to pull your heels towards your groin and that will open the knees a little bit more. 
And then again, pushing the feet forward. So don't move, instead the back flattens. And again, the idea of pulling the heels towards you without moving them and the back arches. So just see how that feels, just to kind of, you're not moving the feet, the feet stay still, so the movement floats upwards into the pelvis. So from this place, bring the knees back together. Bring the knees in towards the belly and then take the feet upwards towards the ceiling. So I just want you to imagine now that just in front of you, you've got a wall um, and your heels are resting against it. So some of us will find it easy to have the feet up. Some of us will feel that we're facing gravity. So if you feel that you're kind of fighting gravity, I want you just to kind of uh, place your hands under your sacrum so your pelvis is slightly lifted off the floor and you've got, the, you've got your hands resting, you're going to feel your pelvis and your sacrum on your hands. That might just make that movement a little bit easier. But if you're happy just to keep your hands down by your side, keep your hands down by your side and just keep those heels lifting upwards towards the ceiling. And in doing this, we're just allowing the blood that kind of cert that sticks down by the feet to pull itself back up towards heart centre. Okay, so we're going to come forwards onto our tummies. So place your hands under your pelvis, if you haven't already, so I just moved mine, didn't I? And you're going to push your feet forwards, simultaneously lift your head up off the floor and you should hinge over your hands. Then go back and into child's pose, so big hinge, hinge, singeing, singeing down, bend your hips back and let your forehead come towards the floor. I've been really vigilant about this now. There's a lady that I teach on a Wednesday evening. I had no idea that she could, she would never get ahead to the floor because she's got long thighs and tiny claws. It makes it sound like she's really strangely shaped woman. But just that, that smallest differences in body shape, you, you know, I'm there saying get your head towards the floor. It might never go because it's physically never going to get there because your legs are in the way and so on. So I've been really nosy now, everybody. So if your head doesn't reach the floor because of like, I don't know, shoulder stiffness or what have you, then I want you just to kind of make two little fists under your hat, underneath your head as though you're doing the one potato, two potato. That's it. Just let your head rest on your hands. And that from there you can begin to release into the neck, let the shoulders feel a little softer. So taking your hands um, wide out in front, we're going to take ourselves over and forwards towards our cobra positions. So we're going to use the shins, gentle push down with the shins, should be the bottom. Feel the push of the shins, go into the hips, into the spine, let your hips come forward, exhaling. Inhaling, coming down and onto tummy. Sweep your nose forwards and lift your gaze up to the ceiling to move to baby cobra and then use your hands to push down and forwards to hinge back. I don't think I've ever taught a lesson recently about this movement in it, I love it so much. Push the shins to float up, feel the hips pushing the spine, feel the hips pulling the spine forwards into up dog. And then elbows bend, coming slowly down. Sweep the nerve, rise up, big push, up and big push back. And again, so push, falling. As you're coming down, it's almost like you're pulling your hands back towards your knees to come down. And then sweep your nerves to rise up. Push. Hinge, exhale. 
just repeating. So 10 breaths in all of this gives us five movements. So the next time we sink down, we're going to adjust ourselves. In fact, we're not we're going to come up to all fours. So float, we're not pulling that range of We are going to come all the way down. I forget my own sequences. So come down onto tummy. And sweep up into baby cobra first, so leave the nose. Whilst you lift it, push your elbows forwards. So your in sphinx pose. So you've got those elbows kind of um I you have to in towards your body to lift your heart. There you go. Okay, so what you've got to focus on your heart and what's happening as you're breathing. So as you're breathing in, your ribs are widening. Just tune into that and just notice well for me, my head drops forwards and as I exhale. The heart comes forwards and the chin lifts. So what I'm not doing is lifting and moving my head and letting the movement come from the spine. So as I inhale, I'm trying to keep my chin still, but the head moves. And as I exhale, the heart comes forwards and the spine kind of lengthens up. So just tune into the rhythm of your breathing. I would widen out your feet, your feet up a little bit, just widen them out so you just like if you if your feet are, if you keep lifting your feet up, like, oh, actually, yeah. <laughs> so what widen them or just have them wait for like if your feet go it might feel a bit crunchy. Yeah. So why I don't I don't I don't, I don't need correct feet unless it's like clamped together. <laughs> Listen to what you say from Jim, but I'm like your feet are going like that, I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> So hopefully open up the heart enough now for us to go back into puppy dog. So slide your hands back towards your chest, push yourself up to all fours. Get now in your mind where your hips are. So I want you to keep your hips over your knees. So we can do like a derby puppy, is that what <coughs> you think? The day old puppy, drop down onto your elbows and just think of letting your heart hang down between your elbows. So you don't have to come all the way down. But if you want to come further forward, you start to walk your elbows forward, but you keep your hips where your knees are and start to let your heart come down. And then for me, the biggest thing is what to do with your head. Because some of us, if you've got your nose on the floor, you're going to feel like you're proper flat in it. And I'm one of those because I've got a big nose. You might have glasses on and have the same issue. So you might just kind of want to have those elbows in, just roughly in front of in the line of your forehead and drop your forehead onto your forearm, just so your head's got somewhere to be. That's it, so you've got your hips roughly where your knees were, fantastic, and that heart begins to sink down. So this becomes a movement again for shoulders and spine. Just feel your breath in the shoulders, feel your breath in the spine. This one, if we do this, yeah. we really hurt. That front or that front? Is that like in the centre of the whole body, or in the front? In the actual front. Mm. It's like, you know, when you do the elbow and you do the trick, and you've got a bit before you yeah. fix in, it's like, it always feels like you can get four six in it. It's hard to forget because it's on the phone, isn't it? It's just going to be movement. There's one little okay. magic movement that gets it. I think it's all informed. So let's climb back up to all fours and we're going to stay again in the shoulders because we're moving into threading the needle. Well, I used to like to think about playing tennis and absolutely hopeless at it. So I'd love to think I've got a forearm like this. You're going to take your left hand up, take your gaze up towards your left thumb, really think of opening out the chest. And then you're going to sweep that left hand down behind the right wrist, 
keep the arm relatively in a straight line it's going to bring the elbow down the shoulder down and then lay the ear down and you're looking out towards the left thumb and if you want to you can keep that right hand static or just kind of push that right hand slightly to the right on the floor and it'll roll you deeper into those ribs on that left side does that make any sense whatsoever okay so that's it hand comes up the left one. I'm doing left one still, and then as we put to move, you then bring your hand down. So that right elbow is going to bend again, slide the hand, and then once you want you down there, you start trying to push that right hand to the right, and it's going to roll you deeper into those ribs on the left side. You just spend some time with that left side rib, feeling the breath here. Is your knee telling you what about that one? Actually, well, actually, you've kind of got at least decent alternative. So if you lay it down and just kind of roll your hand mm -hmm. on your back, that's a, another way to reach the hand to the side. Am I right? Yeah, it is. If, if it works for you, just keep doing that. Yeah, just keep the hand active. So to come out of the pose, draw your bottom back down to your heel, sink into child's pose. And then floating back up to all fours. Lean into your left hand, take your right hand up again. Imagine you've got that really lovely back, uh, forearm that you're going to do in tennis, and then you're going to sweep that right hand behind your left wrist. Let it bring the elbow down, the shoulder down, and again, lay the ear down. And again, it's very just like you're trying to push your mat to the left with your left hand, breathing again deeply into the ribs on the right side. Pushing back to uh, to centre, we'll just take it one side, but keep it moving this time. Inhale up, exhale down. Push back, switch sides. Inhale up, exhale down. Push back, place down. Inhale up, exhale down. Push back. Place down, inhale up, exhale down. Push back and then draw your bottom back to your heel. We're coming out of all the city stuff, so don't worry next. Okay, so we're going to step ourselves into fold. So Find that way. Maybe um, I've got a tendency to always bring my right leg forward first. I'm going to not. I'm going to bring my left foot forward first, push down and take myself into fall. Walking feet in line with hips, take your hands up to your knee, up to the spacious beneath your knees maybe. We'll come to a half fall, that's it. Soften the backs of the knees, lift the sit bones and think of the crown of the head reaching forward. That's it. So if you're looking forward, lower the chin, let the neck lengthen. Lifting and spreading the toes, so fan from little toe to big toe, drop them down. And then allow the spine to begin to flex, so your hands are going to go down towards the, wherever they need to reach. Just always make sure you're maintaining contact with either the ground or the, uh, or the body itself, depending on where you want to go. Just relax all the way through the neck. Just give your head a little shake at the end of the spine, so you know, rub the head, shake the head, let that head feel nice and free. And then slowly rise to standing. <clears throat> Right, so uh, what we're doing then, we're going to do a warrior, but I've got me inspired now about something else, but I'll try a movement on you. Might do nothing, 
it might find something as well. So slide in your feet into warrior one stance. So imagine you've got dirty feet, as you do in my back garden, we've had some guys doing um, building work, the grass is dusty, that's how dirty my back garden is right now. So you've got both feet pointing forward, so have a little look at your feet. That is then going to turn your pelvis forward. And if you feel like you're falling over, I would go wider. That's it, then you should feel a bit less poorly. It's let me just know you guys. Um, we're going to begin to keep the back heel down to start with, and then we're going to bend the front knee. So think of that front knee going over the ankle. Push down with the back foot. We haven't all got the same flexibility in that back heel, so you tend to find that that back heel doesn't want to flex so much. You can always shorten that stance so that that the, the shin bone isn't uh, moving so far forward. Bring in your hands to heart centre. I want you now to take your hands out in front of you as though you're holding a tray. We're going to keep the elbows glued in. And then, um, it, this is called the dumb waiter, it's a Pilates movement, but it's only like one of the few Pilates movements I know. So imagine you've got someone standing by your right and by your left, and you've got two little plates in your hands that you want to give them something to eat. So you're going to keep the elbows in, but you're going to take the hands out. And that begins to work the shoulders and the chest a little bit, doesn't it? And then bring the hands back in front. So again, elbows stay in, palms stay up, and you're rotating those thumbs backwards. And then again, bringing those hands back. How's that feeling? This is what the physio at the hospital tested me to see if I could do this. Okay. And I couldn't. Oh. So that could be weakness. Not in a, you know, it's not weak. But you know, if it's forgotten how to be used, it's not going to want to do it. You can't use this. Yeah. So we've got to touch on it slowly. Yeah. 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 It hurt. Just go in really your pain. <laughs> Oh, pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so we'll hold it in that position, so bring those hands out. And then we'll take the hands up. And then bring the hands to heart. Push the hands forward, push the ribs back. So again, keeping that knee in that position. Bringing the hands up, spine extends. Bring the hands back out. And then back to heart centre, push the hands forward, round the thigh. Sending the hands up, spine straighten. And then again, wide arm. Final time, palms come together, inhaling. Exhaling, round the spine. Inhaling, hands come up. And again, exhale, hands come wide. Bringing your hand yourself into warrior two stance, so spin your left heel in, right foot stays where it is. Then slightly this way so you can see. Have a look at awareness of head, heart, hip, lined up, arms going out wide, looking out towards your right middle finger. If your front knee straight a little bit, bend that rubber front knee above the ankle, and then we're going to lift and spread the toes on the left foot. Really lift and spread them, and then fan them out. So you're going to place down that little toe first, big toe down last. The left heel is pushing towards the wall behind. You're gazing out towards your left middle finger, right middle finger. Again, so maybe check where the knee is, knee over ankle. If it isn't, can you bring it over ankle? And then we'll take our left hand onto the back thigh, right hand is going to sweep up. Firstly, exploring this idea of Sun Warrior. So Sun Warrior is keeping the right knee bent and you're reaching up and off to the left behind you with your right hand. But another thing you can do is straighten your front leg and just allow that left hand to drift down that back thigh a little bit. So almost kind of reverse warrior. How does that feel if you've got his knee bent or knee straight? So adapt. If you've got his knee bent, go back in there. That's what I thought. Big massive stretch for that on the other side. Moving back to worry two, looking back towards that middle finger again, reach out through fingers, knee over ankle, lift and spread those toes in the left foot again, reposition, plant and pressure left thigh.
And then again, lower the left hand, turn the right palm up, sweeping up think again into our Sun Warrior. So again, the fingers are reaching up, we are reaching off and to the left. And again, you can strike the front leg if you really wish. And again, that is going to explore the ribs on the right side. Moving back to warrior two. Take your hands behind you this time and interlace the fingers. And as you do that, you kind of just turn your chest slightly to the right so you're looking more towards your right knee. And then behind you, you're straightening your arms and that is going to open out your chest a little bit. And then I'm now thinking about this place, pubic bone and collarbone, and we're going to tilt the pelvis whilst keeping. So what I don't need to do is to keep the pelvis fixed and dive down. Allow the movement to come from the pubic bone. You're going to feel that tilting and then you start to lean forward. I tend to feel this in that right thigh, inner thigh, back of the thigh, leaning forward. Push out through the knuckles behind, crown of the head reaching forward. Again, that front knee stays a little bit bent. Fantastic, people. And then lower the hands down towards the floor, pivoting your right foot to walk into a fold. So as we did last week, we've got our feet nice and wide. We're going to lift and spread the toes. We're going to bend our knees just a little so we can start to feel that our weight is being carried in the feet. So walk your hands in towards the space between your thighs and that is going to drop your weight into your feet. If you want to, you can take your hands across and out towards your ankles. And then you're kind of then thinking, does it hurt? Possibly it does. You might be walking up into a half fold, not going so deep. You might be bending the elbows and allowing your spine to dip a little bit lower and just relaxing through the back of the head, relaxing through the back of the neck to sink deeper into fold. So walking your hands up towards your knees, tuck your tailbone round to standing and then step your feet back together again. Okay, okay, so we're going to walk to the front of the mat and then again be thinking this time about sliding the right foot back. So again, imagine that you've got dirty footprints, being in my dusty back garden. Looking towards your left foot, have a look to your right foot so everything again is facing forwards. Bring in your hands to heart, so we're going to push the left knee forward and again, seeing how you feel about pushing down into the floor of your right foot. Taking your hands out again, imagine you've got two plates, you've got people behind who cannot afford to be in front of you and you're going to bring those elbows, keep the elbows in and take those hands out. And then bring the hands back. Exhale, hands go out. Inhale, hands come back. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. You can hold three breaths. And then take the hands up, inhale, exhale. Inhale here, exhale, push the hands forwards, arch the back, inhale, rising up. So again, just check on your left knee that it's where you left it, exhale, inhale, exhale. So you're rounding the back, looking down towards your left big toe, inhale, spine stacks, heart comes up, and again, exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, 
exhale. So hands come to heart. We're going to take our right foot around and move into warrior two. Stand to keep your left foot where it is. And then extend the arms looking out towards that left middle finger. Lift and spread the toes of your right foot, plank down, and then exhale, then that left knee sink into your left foot plane. Dropping your right hand, inhale, sweeping the left hand up towards the ceiling. And again, that left hand is, is reaching over to the right behind to expand into those ribs on the left side. If you wish, straighten now your left leg. Keep that softness in the knee, and again, that will expand deeper into the ribs on the left side this time. Moving back to warrior two, so again you bend the left knee, sink down, taking the gaze towards the middle finger. Again, left knee on the left ankle, notice your footprint, lifting and spreading those toes on the right foot, replant down. Turning the left palm up, sweep in again to our reverse warrior, or if we wish, we can straighten that front leg. Keep the softness in the knee, reverse triangle. Lovely. Really good, everybody. Moving back to warrior two. So we're going to take those hands behind the body, turn the chest a little bit towards that left, it's front right side of the mat. The left knee stays bent and then you're floating on pubic bone to collarbone. Interlace the fingers, push down through those knuckles and then exhale. So try to keep space front of body the same as you tilt down. Bottom's going to push back a little bit. Nose again is level with the chin, reach through the crown of the head. Keep that front knee bent. Feel the resistance from the push on the floor. And then take your hands towards the floor, pivoting your left foot to move into a wide leg fold. But firstly, support yourself with your hands, widen those toes, drop them down, soften the knees. And again, as you walk your hands in towards your body, you're going to feel your weight being carried by your legs a little bit more. So you can place those hands on the ankles, maybe walk the hands up the shins towards the knees to go into half version. Or maybe you are going to allow yourself to come down with those hands supporting yourself either by the ankles or by the shins. On the floor, so again, settling. So Walking yourself back up to standing, you step just towards the front of the mat. You've not got much more to do, you've just got seat to still apply. I always like to have a bit of a leg strengthener, and whether or not you agree with me that I haven't strengthened your legs is a different matter. <laughs> I don't feel that I just have something that's got a bit of a knee bend in. So, um, what I'd like to do now is to take your, which one is going to take back, your right foot. I want to turn the toes out a little bit on that right foot. So. But not like full on warrior, but like if you to imagine that you're standing in, I am kind of standing on the clock face. So my foot, you know, imagine it turning out to a one or a two. And um, I would actually step your feet not too far back, just like a short, a short, you know, like maybe as you would when you're walking. In fact, walk forwards and backwards a little bit and then drop your foot back, and that's roughly where you're going to land. Okay, so your feet are forwards. Bringing your awareness again to pubic bone and collarbone, keep that space the same, bring your hands to heart. 
And then all we're going to do is just slowly, and I mean slowly, bend your right knee. Just feel your weight going into that foot. And then bend it a little bit more. And you're letting your pelvis tilt. So again, it's very slow. I'm just thinking of body weight going into that right foot. Bend it a little bit more. So I'm not saying bend it too extreme. It's just a slow descent down. You're feeling your body weight being carried down into that right ankle. Down into the right knee. Down into the right thigh. Bringing your focus into your breath. Who knew you were so much is all I'd say. I can feel it in me. Yeah, I knew that also weighed so much. The life of eating peanut butter. And then slowly push yourself back, and then we'll do that one more time. So again, it's a slow descent. So it's easy to kind of drop in and go, there I am. Take your time feeling that weight change. What I like about this actually is I tend, I'm you know, thinking about the issues that I've got going in my body. The reason that bodies take on certain shapes is that we've allowed it to, we forget how to move. And this is all about just kind of bringing awareness into what you're using in the, you know, through the feet, the ankles, the hips, the legs. And then gently push yourself back. Wowza, switching legs. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm like, I don't know I weigh so much. Is there anyone watch that SES program and then they always get someone to carry somebody? I think my worst nightmare. I can never keep myself up. Walk your, your left leg forward, your left leg back, and then drop it back, and that's where it will be. Bringing hands to heart. And again, really slowly, firstly bend the knee and just feel how you tilt a little bit and then bend it a little bit more and tilt. You're just starting to let your weight go down into that back leg. And again, it's down to you where you stop. So again, it's not a fold, it's a shift in your weight backwards. And then beginning to settle. And then slow push, feel how your weight transfers to the front foot. My phone's very mental today. And again, begin to bend the knee. Slowly let your weight go backwards into the back heel. So you're trying to keep the spine nice and straight. And then push yourself back in. Please know that's a standing posture. So come down. I think you could totally lift that into grabbing your ankle and standing in a funny balance, but we're not. <sighs> Thank God. Right. <laughs> She's only joking. All right, so we're going to get into the hips a little bit more. You're looking at me with a worried face. Am I breaking? Good morning. Good position. Okay. <laughs> What we're doing, we're going to do a little bit of twisting. So sit comfortably, if not the same with your hips. So if you tend to find that you, you find it difficult for your pelvis to be upright, then sit on your shins. Taking your hands around to your right hand around to the right, let it turn your chest, and then take your left hand across onto your right knee. Look over your right shoulder. So you're kind of checking out your spines. Moving forwards. You're maintaining like those curves, so you might have actually like got a little curve back in the neck, ribcage, lower back. So you're going to hold on to your right knee or your right thigh. Take your left hand away from the floor, your right hand away from the floor, come from doing it the wrong way. Reach out to the fingertips of your right hand and then extend your right hand up towards the ceiling. And as we did in that reverse warrior, reverse lunge, you're going to tip it over, over, over to the left. Reach out beyond the knee on that left side. Again, to open out into these ribs on the right.
Sweeping back, taking now your left hand onto the floor by your left side, reach up with your right hand. If you can get your left palm onto the floor, that'd be ace, and then bend your left elbow and allow that to take you over. So again, palm facing across. So if your arms in front, you can maybe um, think about drawing it down and circling it. That might be a nice thing, again, just to explore. Circle it out, sweep it up, circle it out, sweep it up. And then we'll move to centre. So we're going to now look at and take our left hand around. Fingertips go somewhere behind, right hand goes onto that left knee, and then you're looking over your left shoulder. So again, spine is stacked. Reaching out with the fingertips of your left hand, take the left hand up, so you're going to feel the left side lengthening, and then you sweep it again in the direction of that right knee, so you kind of lean a little to the right, holding on to that left knee with your hand in some way. And then moving to centre, you're going to take your right hand, place it again somewhere by your side. So again, you might be dropping that palm to the floor. Left hand reaches up, so reach up first and then you bend the left elbow and that brings you across to open out into the side again. Again, palm facing the floor. And again, if this arm is in trouble, you could maybe sweep it down. Even if it isn't, it's quite nice to sweep it down, to circle, and again to sweep it down and to circle. You might disagree with my idea of what nice is. My idea of nice is kind of finding little bits that I didn't know existed. And then move in to centre. Widen out your feet. We're going to end with a fold. And I know folds are everybody's favourite, no they're not, yes they are. Um, so I'd like you to think about swimming into your fold. So um, one thing as well is, yeah, I'm not automatically drawn to this, I don't know why I think it's just like when I first did yoga, that's what you do, you do fold that way. But in doing that you're actually in, using these inner thighs and you're not needed. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to actually make a point of bringing them roughly in line with my hips and then I'm going to rock backwards and forwards and I'm just going to see how that feels. Does that feel like a good way to fold? Maybe you're going to go wider and do the same thing. So find what is going to help you fold. Bring your feet together and see how that feels. And I'm like listening to sacrum, I'm listening to lower back. And then I'm going to kind of settle in. It might be that I change position when I'm there. So I find my position. I forget about feet. But what I am doing is taking my arms out like a zombie and then dropping them down to the place where they're on the floor and that's where my fingertips are going to be. And um, what am I thinking of? I'm thinking of, um, I don't know if you massage someone, you don't, you might kind of use your body weight, won't you? So it's what you think of dropping your chest into your hands and then sliding your hands forward and feeling your chest staying kind of in your hands. And just let your hands come forwards, let your hands begin to go out in front of you so your chest comes forwards. Once you've gone to where you're ending, I want you to swim your hands out wide as though you're doing the breaststroke. And then as those fingers reach behind you, roll up through the spine, stack to seated, and then slide the, slide the hands out in front. And then again, start to let yourself fall into your hands, sinking down. And then swim your hands wide, and again, roll up through the spine, take an inhale. 
and then exhale, hands push forward. So if you're thinking of, you know, you've got those hands on the floor, your chest is securely in those arms, hands sweep forwards, hands sweep wide, rising up. And again, exhale, and I'm changing my footprints as I'm doing it, it feels better to have my feet in front of hips. Again, sweep wide. And again, while we settle down this time, so settle into your fold. So just let your hands stay connected to the floor, maybe have your elbows soft, let the crown of the head reach towards your feet. It's very easy to think if you're looking at your feet, you're closer to your feet. So I want you to think of the crown of the head to come towards your feet. My hand is strange with your tight. Mm -hmm. Can I bend it? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, you've got a little bending in these, haven't you? I've got tight hamstrings. Yeah, I want to bend them fully, I want you to find your hamstrings. Really keep my knees straight. Don't keep your knees straight, but I've tiny little micro bend. But if you feel it in your hamstring, that's exactly where I want you to feel it. It's stuck in me. So don't think of reaching, just think of setting. So let the hands be nice and think of your hands supporting you. Feel the bones supporting you from that, then I think the hamstring starts to untangle a little bit. When we reach for the feet, it, it's like I think I'm, I, in my mind, I feel like. The hamstrings are still switched on a little bit. Walking your hands up towards your knees, push yourself to seated, and we'll go and lie down now. So settle down onto your back and make yourself comfortable. What's that? You wrecked? Wrecked. Mm -hmm. Good. <clears throat> so settling into the space that you are kind of floor, take a good sense of spread. Notice that physical body. So coming back through the lens of the koshas to visualise the body. So Anamaya kosha, the physical external self that we all see. And it's easy to be attached to that one because it's where we feel things. So if you know hamstrings might be tight, a shoulder gives you injuries, mine is weirdness in my left foot and my hip, forever chasing things around. But this is the body that we're given. You just notice how that is choosing to be. Moving awareness down into Pranamaya Kosha, so breath and energetic body. So firstly, show awareness to it. Does it feel like it's in a different place? The beginning of the lesson. And moving then your focus into your breathing. So we always do the same breathing in these lessons. We're going to just do five belly breaths. So feel how your belly begins to expand, widen. And then bring the belly button in towards the spine to push the breath out. And then again, I wouldn't say we're doing ten if not, we're doing ten breaths here. So again, belly widens. Exhale, belly shorten. Inhale. And exhale. And once it's your own rhythm.
pulling the navel into the spine and anchor it there, taking 10 breaths into the chest. Relax your belly and let your breath now move into full yogic breath. Relaxing off the breath and just settling into your natural rhythm. Now reflecting on Banamaya Kosha, mind body. Within the mind body is where we find the kleshas, these ways of being. And today's theme is that of ignorance, and you know we identify ourselves sometimes with roles that we've been given and things that we've always done and life does those curveballs and things aren't always that way. I'm sure there's been times in your life where you've just thought, you know, I'm never going to get over certain things, but you always do. And what gets you through these things is, you know, time, time heals. But also that knowledge that the future is always going to be there and that we have a resilience within us. And it's always a happy place to be found. And we did this last week and I want to come back to that same meditation and that is finding the happy place. I just want you to transport yourself on into your favourite place in the world mentally. Picture that place laid out in front of you. Picture looking out to the space in front, up to the space above your head, all around, maybe even down to the floor, and just picture what is there in front of your eyes. Maybe this place has texture, maybe you know, there's grass, maybe there's sand, maybe a nice fluffy carpet, but just place, you know, imagine placing your hands down on the ground around you and Feel what's there. And starting just to tune in mentally to the sounds that you would be hearing in this place. And the temperature of this place. And the smells of this place. But the reason I've brought you to this place is not just to make you feel happy, but also just to kind of question the person that you become when you're here. And so whenever life throws a curveball, this person is always still residing inside.
help you by practicing this a few times, you'll be learning those tools to find that person again. Begin to spend time with this person, make friends with them. Let them know you'll be back with them again soon. Bringing your knees quietly now into your belly. Pull the just when you're quietly. Bring them with loads of noise, I don't mind. <laughs> just savage your knees, no, don't do that. And then start to drop your feet down onto the floor in front of you. And as we did earlier, imagine you've got that little rolling pin underneath the soles of your feet. <clears> just about, imagine pushing the rolling pin away and again back towards your hips. And just notice how your pelvis moves, your spine moves, the communication through the body. It's interesting, I'm at a, there's a guy that I, I speak to sometimes at the gym that I work at first thing in the morning, and he just, he's an interesting guy, he was, he, 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 yeah, he, he sounds sense, he sounds like some kind of mystical person, but yeah, but he just went up to this flower, this, this leaf, and he said, imagine if none of these leaves, like, communicated with each other, if, like, one turned against the other, then nothing would function. And all I'm trying to do in our practice of yoga is to find that harmony within the body that obviously is trying to get everything to work with more harmony. And if we take that into the world, seeking less conflict, finding that happy place. So let's place our, uh, bring our knees into the belly, placing your hands under your sacrum, extend the feet up, push forwards, and hinge to seated. And there, just in case anybody wants to talk to me on the Zoom, I do.